Tony. Here. Tim. Why don't you sit down? You know I can't sit down. Ooh. Ooh. Who's that yonder dressed in white? Must be the children of the Israelite. Ooh. Who's that yonder dressed in red? Must be the children that Moses led. Why don't you sit down? You know I can't sit down. Why don't you sit down? You know I can't sit down. Why don't you sit down? Sit down. I can't sit down. I just got to heaven and I wanna walk around. Who's that yonder dressed in blue? Must be my brother as he's coming through. Who's that yonder dressed in gold? Must be a prophet from the days of old. Why don't you sit down? Why you know I can't, I can't sit, sit down. down. Why don't you sit down? You know I can't sit down. Why don't you sit down? Sit down. Why don't you sit down? Why don't you sit down? I just got to heaven and I won't walk around. Who's that yonder dressed in white? Must be the children of the Israelite. Who's that yonder dressed in red? Must be the children that Moses led. Why don't you sit down? You know I can't sit down. Why don't you sit down? You know I can't sit down. Why don't you sit down? Sit down. Sit down. Oh, I can't sit down. I just got to heaven. I want to walk around. Amen. Uh, before we get going this morning, rather this afternoon, as a matter of housekeeping, there were some uh, glasses that were found during visitation. Uh, if these belong to you, please do get with me at any time after the service and we'll get them back to you. But with that said, good afternoon. As you all know, we are gathered here for the celebration of life service for Brad Ketter. Uh, and I believe that that is an apt name, uh, Celebration of Life Service. As you all know, Brad Kidder was a licensed minister within the Disciples of Christ, and there, there's an old refrain that preachers tend to only really have one sermon, and the rest are just variations. I suspect, knowing Brad, that celebrating life was his, that even in the midst of, of grief, of sorrow, of loss, that there is... There's an immensity of love and light and grace for us to witness to. So as we get into it, would you pray with me? Let's pray. God, we thank you for the life and the legacy and the witness of those we've seen but no longer have, those we hold only in our hearts for now, and specifically today for Brad Kidder. God, it is so evident that he is in your son just as your son is in you that we can say with thanksgiving, with surety, that he is in your presence today. And we do give you thanks for that. God, we ask, we ask that this hour, this time, would be a time not just to celebrate him, not just to celebrate you, but to form in ourselves ways in which we too can witness to the same Lord he witnessed to that we could be encouragers, that we could be life-giving, loving. We could incarnate the love of God into every moment, every conversation, always focused on that next person. God, inspire us to 
see in Brad Kidder something for ourselves to take on, just as you have taken him home this day. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. writing when Paul wrote about death and he wrote these words listen I will tell you a mystery we will not all die but we will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed for this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. 
Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that the Lord, that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. among men well Jesus you know if you're looking below it's worse than now pushing and shouting that's crowded my mind so for my sake Teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day. What I have to do Yesterday's gone Sweet Jesus And tomorrow may never be mine Lord help me today Show me the way One day at a time Thank you all for the music today. If we could, before we begin in eulogizing with uh, Brad, let us stop and say uh, the serenity prayer together. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, 
and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. <clears throat> and I know you have this printed before you, but there, there's something about reading it and hearing it all together uh, that makes this part of the celebration. Bradley W. Kenner, Kidder, Sr., and from now on, it's just Brad. 89 of Fort Smith passed away Friday, April 21st, 2023 in Fort Smith. He was born August 15th, 1933 in Denver, Colorado, to the late Milton and Thelma Bolton Kidder. He served in the U.S. Army during Korean conflict and was a professor of world history at the University of Arkansas in Fort Smith. He was a member of the First Christian Church, the Fort Smith Roadrunners, and served on Fort Smith's first board of directors. He was a delegate to the 1979 Arkansas Constitutional Convention and was a director emeritus of Fort Smith Little Theater. He is survived by his wife of 69 years, Brooksine Kidder of the home. Three daughters, Carrie Ennis and her husband, Joe Springdale. Leslie Kidder of Sugarloaf. Brooks Ann Courtway and her husband Jeff of Fayetteville, one son, Bradley Kidder Jr., and his wife Kim of Fort Smith, one sister, Sally Stewart of Livermore, California, two brothers, Doug Kidder of Fayetteville and Bill Kidder, and his wife, Charla, from New York City, six grandchildren and ten great-grandchildren, and a host of friends that are gathered here at, to remember him. Now that, that. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> well, and uh, that's just an, an abbreviated outline of his uh, life. But it tells us so little in comparison to who Brad Kidder really was. Uh, there is so much more to him. I'm, I'm going to do something that I just don't normally do. And it's I'm going to read several scriptures and... They're not any, uh, in any order of importance, except they were important to Brad. And uh, I got these from Brad's Bible and took ones that he had marked, although he had marked a lot of them. Uh, but starting with uh, Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians... In the first chapter, the third and fourth verse. And then as I read them, I want you to think about Brad and how these are somewhat descriptive of the motivation he had to do the things that he did. This was the faith behind his energy. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. And then in the third chapter, who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit? For the spirit kills, but the let the spirit the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And then in Romans eight, what then shall we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him give us also everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died. Yet who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of God in Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors 
through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And then from Ephesians. Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the result of work so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. And then... uh, in 5.18, I just thought this was interesting. and He said, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Uh, I think he liked that one. <laughs> and then uh, the last one I'll read here is Philippians in the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 6. No, excuse me. There's not a Philippians 6. It's in 1. And it's uh, 3 and 4, 5. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from first day until now. I'm confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion. And these, I, I looked through his Bible and he had so many things marked and colored and, and his office was filled with Bible studies and, and uh, books, uh, books on theology, books on psychology, books on politics and history. Uh, you know, you just really have to dig deep to find out all the things uh, about Brad. But he didn't have an easy life starting out. He wasn't taught some of the social skills that other people had, and he really fought for survival. And then in the 1970s, he had a a spiritual experience that changed everything about him. And that's when he went uh, to AA and became a part of AA, which saved his life. Matter of fact, a few weeks ago in AA, he was given a 51-year Chip for continued sobriety. And uh, he did a lot, uh, not just in AA, as you'll see, but in, in his whole life. But there's really no way of knowing how many people that uh, Brad touched throughout his life and gave them a touch of grace in their lives. He may have had a hard time at times of not being overly available because he was always available. I think that sometimes could have been a problem. But a number of people over the years lived with he and Brooksine at their house just because they didn't have a place to go and they were hurting. And uh, that was Brad. He came to Fort Smith for the insurance business and did good until it abruptly stopped. And then Brooksine stepped up and worked and, and did all the things in the family and He came back in with an advertising business and other business ventures. Uh, He he could do a lot of different things. He graduated at the University of Arkansas in 1955 in business. However, without a number of things happening that seemingly went wrong, uh, his direction was changed several times. He was the delegate to the Arkansas uh, Constitutional Convention, and, and went to Little Rock, and people liked him because he brought back all the information and had it printed in the newspaper, so wouldn't keep any secrets from, from folks. He really liked serving people, which probably stemmed from his spiritual life, which was so different than his life before. He also, in, in AA, his goal was to do service. That's what he did. You know, in AA, the highest hierarchy that you can get is servant. 
You know, it's not that there are more important people in AA than others, and Brad never acted more important. He just lived his life, and everybody got some of it that he was around. Um, he was married to Brookseine for 69 years. She says she was married to three Brads uh, <laughs> over the years as he kept changing. <laughs> They raised four kids, and all are different. You guys are diversity on display. <laughs> Each kid has a different relationship uh, uh, with him that was unique. And I didn't know this until we were visiting, but uh, I don't know, that's a little lower. He, uh, he was a master gardener, which I didn't know, but he didn't know much about gardening. <laughs> In a letter in 1988, his, uh, a letter from him was printed in his handwriting in the paper, and in it he talked about raising four kids in Fort Smith, a great place, and all these things. And, and, and then he closed his letter with a wish that everyone would put their trash where it belonged <laughs> and not on the street or in vacant lots. And in that he also told of marrying one of the... Uh, grizzly bouncing cheerleaders. <laughs> he was adventuresome. He liked to do things that uh, it just created something in him to do something with adventure in it. Once while rafting on the rapids at Pikes Peak, he got trapped underneath the raft and was under there long enough underwater that he thought he was going to die until somebody fortunately pulled him to safety. And the very next day, he was quite beat up over that, but he still ran in the Pikes Peak Marathon. Uh, and, and that's what he did. I, I didn't know that uh, part about him of uh, running in all the marathon. I knew he liked to run, but he's also run in the Boston Marathon and the New York Marathon and several others. I didn't get the whole count. but uh, And he had close calls in his lifetime. Of, uh, with the raft and uh, one incident in flying somewhere and coming back with Biker Bob and, and, uh, and John Johnson. The, the plane started sputtering and ends up that the, the motor went out and he emergency landed at Ozark in a field. You know, I, I think some of those experiences helped him to appreciate life more than maybe just anybody <laughs> uh, you, you, you come to appreciate. You know, he lived up to his name, Kidder, because he loved practical jokes. Even last week, he suggested a plan to, to get Kevin by getting lots of people to send empty boxes in the mail without explaining them. <laughs> Now, that's pretty creative. He really enjoyed his life. You, you can picture him, if you want to get a picture of him, in his small sports car. I think it was a midget, maybe? MGB. MGB and and uh, with a Peter Sellers hat on and a pipe. And uh, he liked the little cars. And then, uh, as far as uh, pranks and jokes... Uh, he and Brooksine spent part of the night in jail on their wedding night <laughs> due to a practical joke gone wrong. <laughs> what a way to start. But he always thought of Brooksine. And, and uh, he, he would say, say the prayer so mom can eat. <laughs> then shift a little bit, and this, this was completely new to me, but in 1993... He went back to college to work on a master's degree in history. He went to the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville, and he was 60 years old, so his tuition was free, and that's why he went. <laughs> <laughs> there was pre-internet, pre-cell phone, and pre-freeway driving back and forth to Fayetteville. But he had to compete with all the young students without any benefit of his age. Uh, and then he began teaching history here at West Ark. And his first year, he uh, was voted the most popular teacher. And each year they asked him what he wanted in his classroom, and he would always say, uh, a green board with white chalk. 
because he knew they wouldn't let him have it. <laughs> but he had to use the more high tech to write on something to go on the screen. And uh, he emailed lessons to his students and messages. I, 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 it just makes me know why he was uh, liked so well. But one thing about Brad is that you could be with Brad and he made you feel like you were the only person around. And that's, that's something most of us don't do as we look over somebody's shoulder to see who's better to talk to. Uh, his students said one of the favorite things in his class was the first 15 minutes of class that he would just come out and talk to them. And he would share this uh, uh, practical wisdom or life's wisdom and tell stories. And he would tell stories about the upstream people and the downstream people. And with that, he meant there's a place for everybody. And uh, I know he loved to teach and to preach. And part of that was because he was given a gift to communicate. And when he connected with folks, that gave him energy in life. He, he, he just loved being able to help somebody that wasn't having a good time. And uh, I was benefited of that too. And as I read some of the things online with different people writing, it just gave me a greater feel for that, of people saying that he was there when I needed him. Now, my thoughts have just bounced around to different time frames and all, but, and between different groups of people because he related to everyone from business, to school, to AA, to community, to church. Uh, he was who he was, wherever he was. He and Brooksine uh, were instrumental in helping to found the Gateway House, which I understand it was long before it was incorporated, but it was a 12-step home for women, a safe place to be and to look at recovering. Uh, but because it wasn't incorporated, people just used their own resources and shared those to get it started. He cared for people, especially those who suffered, and he was always gracious. And I don't think that Brad liked confrontation. I, I just picked that up. Y'all didn't tell me all of it. But uh, he, he, because he, he didn't want to make people mad or hurt people, and so he just wouldn't tell him everything, but he would be real gracious about it. And so if you got mad at him, you couldn't stay mad at him uh, because of his gentle manner. But I, I think I am a better person because I knew Brad Kidder. And I hope you feel the same way. I, I want to share one last scripture in closing from Philippians. And it, it kind of uh, tells a little bit about his philosophy about life. It's uh, Philippians 3, verses 10 through 14. Or let's say 12. Not that I have already obtained this or have reached the goal but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature, be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. His philosophy was, if you've got a problem, don't avoid it. And if he were here today, his last words might be to us, straight ahead. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
As per military tradition, I present you three of the expended rounds to be placed in the flag at your discretion. On behalf of all those veterans, ma'am, I'd also like to present you this small flag, symbolic of the final rounds fired in honor of our brother's service for our country. We thank you, your family, will and friends for love and support, and for a great nation. We hope you thank you. In a moment, we will have uh, an associate from Edwards Funeral Home. They will be escorting folks out. But for now, receive this benediction. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>